Hi everyone, it's Michelle and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my February book haul. It's a little bit bigger than I thought it would be but you can never have too many books so I'm going to go straight into them. So this will be in no particular order so the first book is The Mask Falling by Samantha Shannon. This is book number four in the Bone Season series so because it's book number four I can't read you the blurb because it would spoil quite a few things. So in this world you follow our main protagonist called Paige who is a clairvoyant and clairvoyancy is around in the world but it's a bit looked down upon. There are underground gangs who kind of run the place, run these people but basically if you, Paige has always thought if she used her powers outside she would get killed. She uses her powers on the train but doesn't get killed, get sent somewhere she never expected to exist. So that's the setup. It doesn't sound great I know but please go read it. It's a series that I like but I have read this book and if you want spoilers on what I thought about it and what happens go watch my last reading blog. It's all in there. The next book is the Jigsaw Man by Nadine Matheson. I love the sound of this book. Well, first of all, I love the colours, um, orange and blue. And I love the nakedness as well. So now on to the blurb. There's a serial killer on the loose. When bodies start washing up along the banks of the River Thames, D.I. Henley fears it is the work of Peter Olivier, the notorious Jigsaw Killer. But it can't be him. Olivier is already behind bars and Henley was the one who put him there. The race is on before more bodies are found. She'd hoped she'd never have to see his face again, but Henley knows Olivier might be the best chance they have at stopping the copycat killer. But when Olivier learns of the new murders, helping Henley is the last thing on his mind. Will it take a killer to catch a killer? Now all bets are off and the race is on to catch the killer before the body count rises. But who will get there first? Henley or the Jigsaw Killer? <sighs> My type of book. I cannot wait to dive into this book. This book actually was a title and cover by before I re read the synopsis. So yeah, most likely going to be read July, August time or basically the second half of this year. So the next book on this list is The Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce. Can I just say how pretty is that cover and the sprayed edges that match the yellow. Simple things make me happy. Um, so let's get on to the blurb. Everyone's in danger, anyone could be next. An imposing, isolated hotel high up in the Swiss Alps is the last place Ellen Warner wants to be. But she's taken time off from her job as a detective, so when she receives an invitation out of the blue to celebrate her estranged brother's recent engagement, she has no choice but to accept. Arriving in the midst of a threatening storm, Ellen immediately feels on edge. Though it's beautiful, something about the hotel, recently converted from an abandoned sanatorium, makes her nervous, as does her brother, Isaac. And when they wake the following morning to discover his fiancée, Laurie, has vanished without a trace, Ellen's unease grows. With the storm cutting off access to and from the hotel, the longer Laurie stays missing, the more the remaining guests start to panic. But no one has realised yet that another woman has gone missing. And she's the only one who could have warned them just how much danger they're all in. Can you tell I like my kind of freaky thrillers? And the next book is This Golden Flame by MLA Victoria. Another book where I quite like the cover. 
this is a YA book and that's all I can remember. This is very much a hyped book that I pre-ordered. I don't kind of pre-order many of them but this one kind of caught my attention with the cover. I like pretty things, don't come at me. Orphaned and forced to serve her country's ruling group subscribes, Caris wants nothing more than to find her brother, long ago shipped away. But family bonds don't matter in the scriptorium, whose sole focus is unlocking the magic of an ancient automaton armour. Automaton? Automaton armour. Gosh. In her search for her brother, Caris does the seemingly impossible. She awakens a hidden automaton. Automaton. Why am I struggling with that word? Automaton. Intelligent, with a conscience of his own, Alex has no idea why he was made. Or why his father, their nation's greatest traitor, once tried to destroy the automatons. I'm probably not saying that right, I do apologise. Yeah. Suddenly the scriptorium isn't just trying to control Karis, it's hunting her. Together with Alex, Karis must find her brother and the secret that's held her country in its power for centuries. And on the back it says, change your fate, pay the price. So this is a book I am planning to read in March because it goes well with the first two prompts in Becca's book off the film 48 hour readathon. The next book is Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. I think is how you pronounce that last name. I do apologise if it's not. Um, I definitely can't remember what this book's about because it's been on my um, to be bought list for about four years, I think. Probably not four, it's not even been out four years most likely, but it's been on there a while. In the real world, Eliza Mick is shy, weird and friendless. Online, she's Lady Constellation, the anonymous creator of the wildly popular Monstrous Sea webcomic. I said that the wrong way around, I do apologise. Eliza can't imagine enjoying the real world as much as she loves the online one and she has no desire to try. Then Wallace Warland, Monstrous Sea's biggest fan fiction writer, transfers to her school. Wallace thinks Eliza is just another fan and as he draws her out of her shell, she begins to wonder if a life offline might be worthwhile. But when Eliza's secret is accidentally shared with the world, everything she's built, her story, her relationship with Wallace and even her sanity begins to fall apart. Again, this is a very, very, very pretty cover um, and I think this may be a summer read, so July slash August. So the next book on this list is The Library of the Dead by T. L. Huchu or Huchu, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. Again, I have no idea what this book's about because this is from the Goldsboro um, Science Fiction and Fantasy book box every month. That's really weird, I'm sorry. I love the cult cover and I love the stencil spread edges. And it is of course signed. It's the first in a series, so Hopefully I will like it and then I can carry on the series. I do have to show you the nakedness. How pretty is that mint colour? Do you think I could get my room in that colour? I've just changed my room from blue to magnolia while I tended to. I'm not changing it again, Michelle. When ghosts talk, she will listen. Ropa dropped out of school to become a ghost talker and they sure do love to talk. Now she speaks to Edinburgh's dead, carrying messages to those they left behind. A girl's got to earn a living and it seems harmless enough. Until that is the dead whisper that someone's bewitching children, leaving them husks, empty of joy and strength. It's on Roper's patch, so she feels honour bound to investigate, but what she will learn will rock her world. Roper will dice with death as she calls on Zimbabwean magic and Scottish pragmatism to hunt down clues. And although underground Edinburgh hides a wealth of dark secrets, she also discovers an occult library, a magical mentor and some unexpected allies. 
it as shadows lengthen will the hunter become the hunted i have been to edinburgh i went there when i went on a road trip to scotland with my best friend so i am so looking forward to reading this if i manage to read this golden flame within the allotted time frame for becca's book off with on weekend which i will have a video about in well it'll be in my march two year and then a separate reading vlog i will hopefully pick this one up as well and the next book is casting firelight by dana swift i had no idea what this book was about when i first saw it um this only came to my attention on a book club on facebook when this the person who posted it said it's a very similar cover to another book which i can't even remember the name of um i went and looked both books up and thought this one sounds right up my alley so you follow adra and jatin who have been in a arranged marriage to be since they were eight and nine they are from opposite countries they don't really like each other i wouldn't say enemies but they are kind of enemies they then realize there is this evil doing going on between her in adra's country so they work together under different aliases to try and figure out what's happening and to try and stop it i adored this book i've already read it so i've adored it but yeah it, it's a good book i would definitely go and look it up on goodreads and buy it if you haven't because it's it's got every trope i want in there and yes i loved it the next book on this list is the switch by beth o'leary in this book you follow a grandma and a granddaughter who swap living arrangements for a couple of months due to the granddaughter having a nervous breakdown at work and grandma feeling a bit lonely because her husband left her for a very 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 younger salsa dancer chaos ensues love blossoms as you can imagine i adored this book um there is a subplot in there i i won't spoil it i've already spoiled it again i read this um in my last reading vlog so if you want to know what's going on in the book please go watch it a bit like casting firelight i read it last week yeah i love this book beth has quickly become one of my go-to authors i know she has the road trip which is coming out later this year i don't know when it's out in paperback but as soon as i do it's getting pre-ordered because i think she may become one of my automatic buys the next book on this list is from another author by author and that is The Island by C.L. Taylor. This is C.L. Taylor's second book in 2YA and you follow six friends who go to an island to celebrate one of their 17th birthdays. It's an island off the coast of Thailand so the father hires them a guide and um, they're meant to be there for a week. The guide unexpectedly dies and then chaos ensues. I Again I love this book and um, Callie as I call her. Again, if anyone knows she doesn't like that name, please let me know. Um, she, like I said, she's one of my automatic buys. Um, I love her adult work. And when I heard she was going to YA with her first book, The Treatment, I was a bit like, I hope she doesn't dumb this down. She doesn't dumb it down. It's great. Um, again, I read this last week, so please go read my spoiler-filled reading vlog if you want to know what happens in this book. The next book on this list is The Holdout by Graham Moore. All I can remember about this book is it's got an heiress in it. Not a great start, I know, but let's get into the blurb. Ten years ago, we made a decision together. When a 15-year-old heiress to a billion-dollar fortune vanishes on her way home from school, her teacher is a prime suspect. It's an open and shut case and a quick conviction seems all but guaranteed. Until Maya Seal, a young woman on the jury, persuades them all to vote not guilty. A controversial decision that will change all of their lives forever. Ten years later, one of the jurors is found dead, and Maya is the prime suspect. Is she being forced to pay the price for her decision all those years ago? Can you tell I like my thriller books? <laughs> 
So again, another book I'm really, really, really looking forward to. The next book on this list, and it's a pretty small one, is A Good Man by Annie Katz. I can't tell you what this book is because I didn't even know I pre-ordered it. But it's a small book. Um, it's only like 212 pages, so I can't be too angry at myself. Thomas knew from the moment he saw Miriam that she was going to change his world forever. They are the couple everyone envies. So when Thomas wants Miriam to be his wife, he doesn't hesitate in popping the question. And when they start a family, Thomas finally has the life he's always dreamed of. But what happens when dreams shatter and the unspeakable happens? And who is to blame when there's one man left standing? The next book on this list is Nightfall Still Missing by Helen Callahan. I didn't realise I'd already read two of Helen's books before until I saw the back and it had the covers on them. I really enjoyed Dear Romy and Lies so I'm quite looking forward to reading this book as well. Fiona and Madison have been best friends since childhood so when Madison sends her an unexpected call for help Fiona doesn't hesitate to come to her aid. Madison, an archaeologist, works in a dig on a tiny Orkney island. It's January, there is little daylight and the icy North Sea wind warns of a coming storm. I don't know why I struggled with that, I do apologise. <laughs> but when Fiona gets off the ferry, Madison isn't there to meet her. And as she approaches Madison's cottage, she sees that the windows are dark. Madison is missing and no one knows where she's gone. The next book on the list is Play Nice by J.P. Delaney. Pete Riley answers the door one morning to a parent's worst nightmare. On his doorstep is Miles Lambert, who breaks the devastating news that Pete's two-year-old, Theo, isn't Pete's real son. Their babies got mixed up at birth. Pete, his partner Maddie, and Miles and his wife Lucy agree that they'll find a way to share the boys. But a plan to see the hospital unearths disturbing questions about just what happened the day the babies were switched. And as the two families' lives become more intertwined, Maddie and Pete have to decide how far they will go to make this work. How much can they trust the real parents of their child or even each other? The next book on my list is The Henna Wars by Adiba Jagadar. I think that's how you pronounce the name. Hopefully it is. If it's not, I do apologise. Nishat's parents say she can be anyone she wants as long as she isn't a lesbian. She doesn't want to lose her family, but she also doesn't want to hide who she is, which only gets harder once Flavia walks into her life. Sorry, Flavia walks into her life. I do apologise. Beautiful and charismatic, Flavia takes Nishat's breath away. But as their lives become tangled, they're caught up in a rivalry that gets in the way of any feelings they might have for each other. Can Nishat find a way to be true to herself and find love too? This book is getting read in March because the author, Adiba, grew up in Ireland, in uh, Tullamore, where I have family. So... She definitely fits the theme of an Irish author. So while she grew up in Ireland, she's also Bengali. So she's both. So I definitely class her as an Irish author as well as a Bengali author. The next book on this list is The Falling in Love Montage by Sierra Smith. So it's either Cara, Sierra or Chiara. I do apologise. It's one of those Irish names which can be pronounced about four different ways. So yeah. Sasha has a simple plan for the long hot summer before uni. Party, watch horror movies and forget all her troubles by kissing girls. Perfect summer. Between getting over her ex and dealing with the pain of her mum's illness, Sasha feels she deserves a break. Enter the scene. Ruby, rom-con fan and optimist. Ruby is the prettiest girl Sasha's ever seen but Sasha doesn't want to get into another relationship. 
so Ruby challenges her to try a summer romance with the serious parts left out, just like in the movies. But what happens when the falling in love montage ends? Again, another book being read in March. The next book is Ghostlight by Joseph O'Connor. Dublin, 1907. Outspoken and flirtatious, Molly Allgood is a Catholic girl from the slums of Dublin, dreaming of stardom as an actress in America. Her lover, the leading playwright, John Singe, is a troubled genius whose life is hampered by convention and by the austere and God-fearing mother with whom he lives. Their affair, sternly opposed by friends and family, is quarrelsome, affectionate and tender. Many years later, Molly, now a poverty-stricken old woman, makes her way through London's bob-scarred city streets. Alone but for a snowdrift of memories, as she struggles to navigate the present, Molly's past threatens to consume her. The next book on this list dives back into the Shadowhunter world, a world that I have loved since I was a teenager. And that is Chains of Gold, The Last Hours, book one by Cassandra Clare. You follow the children of the characters from the Immortal Devices, if I remember correctly. So I can't wait to dive into this one. Cordelia Carstairs is a shadow hunter, a warrior trained since childhood to battle demons. When she travels to London, she encounters childhood friends James and Lucy Herondale and is drawn into their world of glittering ballrooms and supernatural salons. All the while, she must hide her secret love for James, who is sworn to marry someone else. But Cordelia's new life is blown apart when demon attacks devastate London. Trapped in the city, Cordelia and her friends discover that a dark legacy has gifted them with incredible powers, and a brutal choice will reveal the true cru price, the true cruel price of being a hero. Now, because this is the start of a new series, technically you could start this book and not read the rest of the Shadowhunter world. However, I would suggest you read the Immortal Devices first before you give this new series a try, just so that you know the parents and a bit of the background as to what has happened in the past. So you're gonna, so you're soon gonna not see two of the books standing up because I've lost room. <laughs> I need more shells. The next book is The Gilded Ones by Namina Fauna. Um, this is the Waterstones version, so it is signed by the author and has pretty sprayed edges and i love the foil as my best friend would say shiny shiny <laughs> are we girls or are we demons are we going to die or are we going to survive <clears throat> a young heroine fights to save a world that would dare tame her and discovers she is her own fiercest weapon that's all it says in the back so all i need to know it's all you need to know um <laughs> If you are interested in this book, I would definitely go read the Goodreads um, synopsis. Oh my god, why can't I think? So yeah, go read the Goodreads synopsis. This is a book that is very, very, very highly hyped. So I am hoping this doesn't let me down. And the last book on this list, and another very, very, very hyped book. Get a Life, Chloe Brown. In this book, you follow Chloe Brown, who has a chronic illness and has been good all her life. And after a near-death experience, thinks, you know what? I'm going to write a list of all the things I want to do before I die. On there is about being a bit of a badass. So she goes to her flat, like, control of the building, I think it is. Yeah. Um, Red, um, and asks him to help because he has a motorbike and tattoos. And you follow their story. I read this last month. Ah, well, this month, I should say it again. It's in the reading. No, it's not, actually. It is in a reading vlog, but not the last one, the one before. I enjoyed it. Was a bit. Was it a bit too hyped? Yes, but I still enjoyed it. Um, I will be carrying on with the other two books in this trilogy. And there you have all the books I got this month. Um, Quite a variety of books this month. Some are for plan TBRs, some are just pre-orders that I like the look of or like the synopsis. 
if you've read any of these books and you want to give me your opinion please do comment down below i will be happy to speak to anyone and everyone if you don't want to put on a youtube video come follow me on instagram twitter or good reason dm me comment on there i am always happy to speak to anyone i will put all the links down below if you like this video please don't forget to give it a like if you are new to my channel hi i'm michelle i talk about books randomly I'm either going to give you really, really spoiler filled book reviews or I'm going to give you very, very vague ones. Either or depends on my mood. <laughs> if you have liked this video and you are new to my channel, please subscribe. If you want to watch a few more videos of mine before you do subscribe, click on the name. You will see all the videos I have posted. Have fun. And until next time, which will be Sunday's reading vlog. Bye, everyone.